Hey everybody, look at that. Oh, this is so exciting. So this is a first generation Monarch Caterpillar on common milkweed and they're feasting and moving right next to them is a milkweed tussock that also loves to eat common milkweed. They are a moth or will turn into a moth and these will turn into a butterfly. They coexist just fine if you have enough milkweed. We are so glad that we preserved this little patch of milkweed that is coming up in our path. I'll link to the video at the end where I talked about the challenges we've been having here at keeping common milkweed around. Today I saw the second adult here of the season. Now this is August 4th or 5th and that's just kind of crazy. So we're really hoping that the North American population of monarchs can get stable, that we can all help them enough and work on their habitat in the summertime and wintertime so that they can continue their great migration. This is a globally stable species, which I have learned from the North American Butterfly Association. There are monarchs all around the world. But these here in North America have that great migration. In the east, they go to Mexico, and in the west, they're spending their winters in the mountains of California, I believe, or along the coast. Those of you that are out there, you know best. You can comment where they are overwintering, but I know both are having a hard time. So it's very exciting to see we've got, I think, five or six here. Let's see, there's one. They look like they're getting ready to molt or have just molted. And then there's another one down here under that leaf right there. And then there were, I think there was one more maybe yesterday. So I'm hoping I just can't find them. But let me step back and you can see these are milkweed here in the path. And this is what we preserved. Now maybe that monarch that came through today will also lay more eggs and hopefully be super fast in the caterpillar stage if so, so that they can get big <laughs> and fly to Mexico. Wow, now yesterday we had two on here on this teeny weeny plant. And I know that when they're young, they like more of that tender growth. And that's where the adults will lay the eggs. But as they're older, they can handle these big leathery leaves a lot better and there should be plenty of food right in here for these guys so that's very exciting now the milkweed is the host plant you all know that and you gotta have the host plant and the nectar plants I think there's enough nectar plants around what do you think the whole property is like this. It's got to be like a beacon in the sky for any migrating monarchs that are currently still moving north from generation after generation. They must look down and go, ooh, this place looks so nice. And one other piece besides the host plant and the nectar plants, but it is somewhere to make their chrysalis and so thick plants allows a good a lot of good options for them to explore and then choose a spot where they can hang and m make their chrysalis and hopefully be safe from predators we've had a lot better luck this year with the monarchs caterpillars than in prior years and i think that's because in prior years you see that roadrunner and then this frog, the paper wasps love to make nests in there. And paper wasps are really cool. They're native, and, but they do eat caterpillars. That's what they feed their babies. And so I think that there's been a struggle there of balance. 
but this year there are very few paper wasps as well and so they are not taken the cats and jammers as Steve likes to call these guys so I just wanted to share the good news this patch of milkweed is attracted a female a while back and there are caterpillars <laughs>